guys, Cameron here with Canadian Gamer coming at you with another video. Take a sip of my wine here. So that intro, you saw the uh, the white rabbit, the snowshoe hare, if you will. You don't see those every day. I don't know if I've ever seen one. Usually we get a lot of rabbits in Ontario. You see them running in your backyard and whatnot, but they're always gray or brown. So to see a, a white rabbit or commonly referred to as the snowshoe hare, or maybe you might consider those two different species, pretty cool to see that out in the wild. Now that song needs no introduction. That's, of course, Jefferson Airplane's White Rabbit, which was famously featured in the Oliver Stone film Platoon, which I highly recommend watching if you haven't seen it, any of you youngsters out there. <laughs> now, when I left the trail this afternoon, uh, again, uh, two white-tailed deer were spotted at various points going down the highway. Big, big deer, too, so... It's the time of the year, the year, you know, the deer like to sort of venture out of the woods towards the river, you know, get get a little bit of water. Uh, that's just how it is. So you got to be careful when you're on the roads there. So I had a few things I wanted to talk about here. Now, the first thing is uh, I'm excited to let you guys know I started playing Splinter Cell yesterday. And yeah, it's absolutely incredible. And, you know, it's funny. Uh, I mentioned I'm not really big on the uh, the stealth games. You know, I do have uh, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater for the PS2. And I actually, full disclosure, I don't like it. I find uh, it has high production values, which is, um, of course, expected with a Kojima type of game. But I find the gameplay is pretty shallow in that one. And I had originally picked it up because it had a bit of a Vietnam vibe to it, but I just never really could get into it. But with Splinter Cell, and uh, I don't want to talk about it too much here, but uh, the again, the, the lighting effects and the use of shadow in this game uh, is absolutely incredible. It is 100% a stealth game. You cannot try to bum rush anybody or try to rush to your next checkpoint. Uh, I tried to do that a few times. <laughs> And it just makes matters worse because if you're low on health or you're low on ammo and you get to a certain point and there's enemies coming after you and you've already gone past the save checkpoint if you're using it, uh, there's no turning back. You're pretty much fucked and you got to start the whole mission all over again. So. <laughs> but I'm really, I'm actually, I'm surprised. Like I'm really enjoying this, this game a lot. And uh, from what I'm reading... The second one, while good, kind of ventured a little bit too too far away from the successful formula of this game. But then the third installment, I think it's called Chaos Theory. Apparently that's the best one in the series and it has a very dark tone to it. So I may have to pick up May. I definitely will have to pick up Chaos Theory, but not until I work my way through this one first. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about, you may have noticed I've got a new light here. Uh, it's a Super Mario, kind of like a, a LED light. I picked it up at the thrift store. It was only like less than five bucks. I think, I don't know if you still can, but I think at one point you might have been able to pick this up at uh, GameStop, EB Games. So yeah, kind of cool. I thought it was cool. Uh, the next thing I want to show you guys, uh, this is sort of a big announcement here. Uh, I think I've decided on my new uh, artwork for the games room, which is going to replace the old girl here so you guys can check it out here i found this on a steam forum and this looks to be fan made i believe uh for doom 3 and i don't know if i'm going to put you know canadian gamer maybe in, in black letters on here or maybe i'll just leave it as doom 3 and uh get it blown up and uh, put it in the frame i think it's really gonna pop that's what i'm thinking anyways it's not a hundred percent yet but that's what i'm leaning towards just to sort of freshen things up so yeah really excited about that um the other thing i want to talk about good news and bad news uh the good news is i recently upgraded to sony vegas movie maker premium 2022 edition which is pr brand new uh and i got it for almost 50 percent off 
Uh, and it's awesome. There's so much you can do. Uh, the overlays are of high quality, almost like movie-like. Uh, I could do a lot of incredible things with this new version of uh, Movie Maker. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to want to run particularly well on my uh, desktop. <laughs> I installed it on my laptop and it seems to be running okay, knock on wood. Uh, the whole interface is completely overhauled. I have to learn it all over again. So for the time being, uh, I reinstalled my old version of Movie Maker on my desktop, which seems to run just fine. And I'm going to continue to use that for the time being. And what I may end up doing is uh, I'm going to use my laptop. And that's where I'm going to create uh, videos that I want to take my time with and put a lot of effort into. So if you notice on the channel, obviously I don't have super high production values. And you may notice once in a blue moon I post a video that's got uh, a better than average production values. Let's leave it at that. You'll know why. It's because uh, for every 10 videos I put out, I might put out one or two that's using the new version of Movie Maker. So I just want to give you a heads up. Uh, you know, it'll be like that until I can upgrade my desktop computer and get something that's a little bit more uh, up to spec with a with a quad processor if you will <laughs> so I guess the last thing we'll talk about take a sip of my wine here first I'm just gonna come out and say it uh, I'm gonna say what I'm sure a lot of you out there are thinking but most people don't really want to address the uh, the elephant in the room and I've noticed you know over the last couple of years man oh man especially last couple year the quality of content on youtube in general has gone right down the shitter and uh you know it's funny because back in the day years ago uh you get a lot of really good grassroots content on youtube people weren't afraid to be creative and whatnot and i know i know also this is kind of a quiet time of year um, a lot of content creators or youtubers as i like to call it they might not be putting out as much content right now. Um, I don't want to get too off the tracks, but obviously, you know, some people get the winter blues and they're just not motivated to post content. I'm not noticing a lot of content coming up my feed from most of the uh, the people that I follow, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, it is rather unfortunate, but just to sort of steer back to what I was initially talking about, um, I, I'm just noticing there's just a lack of quality in the content that's being posted on a lot of these channels. I've had to cut back on a lot of channels that I was subscribed to because I'm just seeing way too much of the same old thing. There's too many YouTubers that are trying to chase that viral video. Uh, there's too many cookie cutter formula formulaic videos out there. Um, I talked about this and I'm not trying to, you know, uh, beat my chest out here and uh, act like I have a holier than thou channel. It's not about that at all. But you know, it's just when I talk when I say quality of content, I'm not talking about you know that YouTuber out there that's got that super high quality camera. They've got the lights. They've got the scripting. They've got the high production values. Fuck all that. I'm not talking about that. That's exactly what I don't want to see. I want to see more channels that have grimy, dirty looking production values. I don't care about that so much. But I'm talking about what's coming out of their mouth, what they're talking about, topics of conversation. Uh, not, you know, be not afraid to venture off the beaten path. And not always just talk about the same old thing over and over and over again. Uh, it's just it's like it's like a lot of these YouTubers are afraid to to sort of get creative. Um, you know, they're afraid that if they post something that is maybe not of interest to their subscribers, that the video won't get a lot of views. Like again, if you're so focused, if you're so laser focused on getting 500 views or 600 views or 1,000 views or 10,000 views, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. <laughs> you know, like I said, I I've never been about views. 
Uh, I could care less if a video of mine gets 50 views. I don't want 10,000 views on a video. I don't want that because you know why? If I'm getting 10,000 views on a video, I'm probably putting out some bullshit content that people are clicking on because they thought the thumbnail looked interesting. Uh, and that's not the reason why I do this. It's just, I, I just, again, it's just really unfortunate. I'd like to see, you know, more abstract content. Uh, I know what I do is sort of unique in a way. Um, I, I kind of put out content that it's kind of polarizing. Some people don't like, you know, the fact that I'm using an old school camera. <laughs> For a while I was using a rock band mic. And, uh, you know, sometimes I put out videos where the topic of conversation is just not everyone's cup of tea. But that's that's what I want to do. I want to put out content that is not everyone's cup of tea. I do not want to put, put out fucking... Not that I have a problem with pickups videos once in a while because I do them here and there. But I don't want to be putting that out every week. Um, you know, there's much more... Uh, that could be talked about on this channel. Um, again, I've been going outside posting outdoor vlogs. I get it. That's not everybody's cup of tea as well. I, I may have gained a few subscribers along the way because of those videos. I may have lost a few. But it's just like I said, it's just unfortunate because like I refresh my feed daily, sometimes hourly, you know, just like you guys do. Just hoping for a exciting video to pop up something to watch something to whet my appetite and i just haven't been seeing it lately it's just <laughs> the creative well has has run dry you know there's there's no longer any david cronenbergs or any david lynch's out there in the youtube community uh it's it's just a bunch of michael bay and james cameron's out there trying to post the next viral video it's just unfortunate you know I I, 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 I I don't understand I do and I don't I understand why a lot of these content creators are trying to hit the big time trying to get the viral videos I get it um, you know they're, they're stuck in like tunnel vision and they can't see the forest through the trees but I I, I don't get it I, I personally would never want to pigeon myself pigeonhole myself in that sort of category where you're constantly trying to climb this mountain to get views and uh, you're more concerned about posting videos that people may like than, than posting videos that is true to who you are as a person that maybe may not get a lot of views but at the end of the day you feel much better as a person putting out something that's got a little bit just a little bit of passion I'm not asking for the world here so that's it that's what i wanted to talk about there's like there's just fuck all to watch right now on youtube and a lot of the channels that uh at least in my opinion used to post really good content uh a lot of guys and gals out there are are trying to chase the dragon if you will they're trying to chase that next big thing and it's it's unfortunate so it is what it is so i'm gonna cut it off there right around the 14 minute mark I'll probably go back to playing a little bit more of Splinter Cell tonight. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. And I will be back with more content for you guys shortly. So thanks so much for watching. Have a good night.